Mastercam 2021 public beta is now live. <laughs> There's a lot of new features for 2021, as we can see from this what's new document. Uh, but since we are still in beta, I'm not going to go through every single feature here or how all of these actually work. Uh, obviously, things can still change. However, I do want to touch on the big ticket items. And what I consider big ticket items are new tool paths. Plus, at the very end, I want to go through what I think is the absolute best upgrade they've made outside of these new tool paths. So again, as far as I, things I want to touch on here, I just want to focus on new toolpaths or, or new options inside of toolpaths. So to start off this tour, we're going to launch into the face mill toolpath and just build this as the default for now. So this looks like your normal facing toolpath would, just a couple of cuts going straight across the part. Um, that's great. So the addition in facing is this option down here called roll in. So I'm going to checkbox this, uh, give this a radius and let's have a look at the difference. You can see what happens now is the toolpath actually starts with a rounding motion. Uh, so what this is intended to do is this is supposed to ease the cutter into the cut, into the material. And I think the best explanation was done by those guys in the yellow coats over at Sambic. I will leave a link to this video in the description or as a card. It completely describes the roll-in technique. So that's, that's our... our addition to the face mill toolpath. Um, let's hop quickly over into dynamic mill and from outside a little preview here. So there's what we're going to cut. And the addition here in our 2D dynamic world is this corner pretreatment option. So corner pretreatment, as we all know, dynamic mill likes to do nice uh, rounded motions. The smoother, the better. And corners, sharp corners especially can cause some issues or cause some areas of slowdown. So what we've got now is a, a separate tab in order to deal with these corners separately if we want. So let me just build this toolpath as is for now. Uh, if we come into corner pretreatment, turn this on. Let's give it a step over. So I need to give it step downs. And let's go with a 0.2 radius in the corners. Uh, I can't really tell in this back plot, but you can see there there's some motion going on. So let's go into our back plot one more time. And what you'll see now is these corners being dealt with kind of before the toolpath then gets going. So there's the corner being dealt with, that corner, that corner, and then the last one, and then we get into the toolpath. So you also have the option of, you know, only doing the corners. Maybe you only want to deal with corners to start. Maybe you're not worried about the rest of the toolpath. So you can do that here with corners only. Uh, include corners will do, obviously, everything we just saw. So that's the, the two options inside of toolpaths that I wanted to show. So let's have a look at now some new toolpaths. And notice down in the hole making section, we've got some additions here, chamfer drill and advanced drill. So advanced drill will work on this part. So let's launch this guy up right now. Uh, this pops up because again, we're, we're in beta and there isn't default set for this new operation quite yet. But again, if you are dabbling around with this, just don't worry about that prompt, just click OK. Uh, so basically all we need to do here is, is the same thing as we would with any other drill, just select the hole that we want to drill. Uh, the difference here is our cut parameters page. So now we can define specific amounts of moves with movement types. So my part here, I've made it quite simple to deal with. Uh, this top section is one inch, there's a gap of one inch, and there's an additional section of one inch. So what I can do down here is define those three sections and how I want to deal with them. So feeding motion for an inch, faster motion for 1.9, feeding motion again down to three, and then rapids back out of the hole. And let's have a look at this toolpath in back plots. So they were at uh, Z positive 0.1. Uh, that was in a rapid motion. Next step, uh, you can see that was linear feed, 10 inches per minute, down into 1.105 or 502. That's the tip comp value with the extra breakthrough. So there we've now moved down to negative 1.9 at 100 inches per minute. So that's that middle section we defined. And then feeding all the way through, negative uh, 3.1502 at that 10 inches per minute. And the next one should be a rapid out of the hole. Uh, so it might seem kind of you know trivial that that works, but in the past, this has been a custom post, a custom drilling option, uh, which is now you can completely define multiple steps, multiple feed changes, uh, reversals of spindles, coolant on and off, uh, spindle ch speed changes, everything, and it all will work in your default post. So here is my post firing up. So there you can see the, the drilling operation. It is all longhand. Um, obviously, there's no can cycle that would handle this uh, by default. So it is longhand code, but that's 
that's fine. That's great. That's fantastic. You can actually do this with a toolpath right inside of Mastercam. So let's leave this part for a minute and we'll go look at the uh, chamfer drill operation and then we'll come back to this and look at uh, one more operation in a second. So I'm going to load up this plate here. So here I've got a plate and I've got all kinds of holes in it. Uh, those that do tool and die work, you know, this is a common, a common part. Uh, a plate, all different size holes, and you now want to chamfer all these holes. So typically in the past you would, you know, group each different sized hole and, you know, drill it to the correct depth depending on the size of that hole. So with this new toolpath, chamfer drill, uh, so basically all I can do now is I can come in and just start selecting all of my holes. Yeah, so there, all of our holes are selected. So you go over here, you can see the different size holes that we're dealing with, 257, 250, uh, 422, 687.5, uh, all sorts of different sized holes. Okay, let's just green check. Um, make sure we grab a correct tool so that we don't get that prompt there. Let's get this chamfer tool. And now all we need to do is tell it how much of a chamfer we want to apply. So let's go something big enough so we can see it easily in our back plot. I'm going to go with 30 thou. And we run this through. Okay, and we'll let this uh, do some enhancing here. Enhance. Enhance. So there you can see all of our holes have been chamfered. Different sized holes all have the same chamfer. Obviously we're going a little bit too deep here because these chamfers are blending into each other. So maybe 30 thou wasn't the best choice, maybe something like 20, but all these holes, whether it's, you know, I think this is maybe a quarter inch over here versus uh, these bigger guys over here, 17, 32, whatever these guys were, uh, they all have the same chamfer width applied to them. So that's a pretty cool operation as well. So let's hop back into that original part file and let's go into the multi-axis world um, and have a look at this guy, 3 plus 2 automatic roughing. Now this is a pretty cool toolpath, I gotta admit. This is, uh, I don't know, as programmers I think we need to be worried. This is, this is getting too close to put a part file in a, in, a, in a piece of software and click a button and it programs it for you. So basically what this thing's gonna do is it's gonna try and do exactly what the title says. It's gonna try and completely rough this part out uh, in a 3 plus 2 strategy and with you only giving it minimal information or minimum amount of guides as to how you want it to be done. So here's an end mill I've picked. We do need to give it stock. Tool axis control, I'm going to leave this to automatic for now. We have options here for manual versus semi-automatic. So this is how basically it decides how it wants to attack the part to, to cut it and rough it. I'm just going to leave this as is. And I'm not going to get into this collision checking for now as well. I just want to get into this toolpath, make it and just show kind of what it does. So there's our toolpath. It just completely roughed this part out on its own with only me telling it uh, what to cut. And having a look at the back plot, let me turn this orange stuff off. You can see it's, it's wanting to attack this part first from this, this plane over here that it's, it's created. It's decided it can get the most of the material cut from that first plane. And once it's reached as much as it can from one plane, it will switch. So now it's switched over to this plane over here and it's roughing from that direction. And if it needs to, it will switch again, which it does not. So it's gotten, it, it's met the requirements we laid out in the, in the uh, operation. Uh, but what if you don't like how this thing attacked the part? What if you want it to go from top and then front and then uh, left or right or something? So here you can come into the semi-auto. So what you can do here, right click, select tool plane. And I'm going to say, I first want you to attack it from the top. Right click, add, next, I want you to attack it from the front. And then next, I want you to attack it from named plane. I want to go from the, the right side. Okay, and then after that, you know, if it's there's still material left behind that you need to get based on the parameters, it's allowed to make its planes on its own from, from there. So I've told it the three planes to start with, and after that, it can figure out what it wants to do. So here's that finished operation. Let's again hop into a back plot. And you can see we are in fact roughing from the top as far as it can reach. It will then switch to the front. And then finally, if needed, it would go to the right. But since it, it met the requirements of the roughing operation, it doesn't need the right. So the operation has stopped there. Uh, I guess before we get into the thing that I wanted to talk about the most, which is the the thing that I'm most excited about in 2021. Uh, a few things about the, the public beta. Number one, you have to be on active maintenance to be able to download and preview it. 
To get access to this public download, you need to log into the Mastercam website, so you must be registered there as well. And another thing to keep in mind, uh, this is beta. Beta is the key word here. Beta does not guarantee that everything works 100% bulletproof. So if you are the least bit weary of posting out code and running it, then maybe beta is not for you. Um, but let's hop into what I am most excited about in 2021. Okay, so I'm going to go through this one time and we'll see if you can pick up on it. So what I'm going to do right now is just try and make a stock model. So I've clicked on stock model. I'm just going to make it from my original stock setup and I hit green check mark. And that right there, if you picked up on it or not, that is what I am most excited about in 2021. You may not have seen it, but what happens in 2021 is when you click on stock model, I've already made one. I'll keep that in mind. I've already got uh, a stock model made. This is a new stock model again. Notice the name at the top. The name is auto populating. This is, uh, this is fantastic. You can't imagine how many times I've wanted to uh, swear <laughs> about having to name my stock models something generic. So this is amazing. This is what I'm most excited about. This is the by far the best thing in 2021. So whoever did this, I should be buying you a coffee or giving you a high five or something because this is amazing. I 